Okay, at this point we're um, starting to hook up the wires. It'll go to our 25-pin D connector that plugs into the back of the robot arm. On this end, basically I'm taking the wires, um, poking them through the holes in the perforation board, and when they come out the other side, um, like right there you can see one, it comes out the other side, and I solder it to the wire that uh, connects to the chip in the appropriate place. A little difficult to see, but there it is. And I did the same thing here with the ground wires, the 12 volt power wires are going there, uh, and so on. So I'm just plugging these wires into the board. On the other end, we're hooking them up to the appropriate pins. There's a certain amount of bookkeeping involved here. <laughs> you know, keep the right, the right pin number and the right thing. So the next pin I'm going to do is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is minus 12 volts, which is the black wire. So the black wire will go into the next one. And to set that up, I've already put some solder in that solder cup. I've tinned the wire. We'll push them together, um, or set them together, put heat to it with a solder gun. And as soon as it warms up, we just slide the, um, slide the wire into the socket, and we have a connection. fairly quickly. Big problem is all these cables. It's just awkward to get everything into position. This iron is a happy iron. A little bit of solder, liquid solder on the tip just to help the heat transfer. That's okay, the right angle. probably in the way, isn't it? I don't know. I can't tell. That slides right in and it's done. And we'll just continue on with the rest. Okay, at this point it is soldered. You know, what we need to do is take our meter and pin it out and make sure that things are connected that should be connected. For example, if I look at my um, my ground, I should be seeing that in pin 5, and 1, 2, 3, fourth pin down on the other row. So that pin, that pin like I should, and there should be no connection to any of the adjacent pins. Apparently there isn't. And I should also have connection over here to the, the ground pins. This one, this one, this one, this one, and not any of these. this whole thing, and particularly on the power and ground, we want to make sure that we don't have a cross connection. We just absolutely blow everything out in the beginning. Okay. okay. And the center of the voltage regulator. Yep. That pin. Okay. We're looking good there. I'm just going to Check out the other ones. Plus 12 volts should be pin number, well, essentially the next pin's over. That one, and that one, but not any of these others. And I should see 12 volts Checking the data sheet, that's VCC2 on pin 8, which is this one. 
Oh no, I'm looking it upside down. This one. Yeah. And not the others. One thing that's easy to do is get things confused up and down, left and right, especially when you flip the board, board over and start working on the back. Before you know it, you've wired up the entire thing backwards. Just another reason to do this kind of check. This wire is connected to nothing. That's the a virtual ground from inside the robot arm. To be 12 volts over there. Okay, and 12 volts there. Okay, so I'm going to keep checking my pinouts and. After I'm done with that, we'll uh, apply some power to it from a variable power supply and just turn it up slowly and make sure nothing strange happens. And then we can try putting the chips in and we can even try hooking it up to the robot. Well, and here it is, if you're still with me. Um, I've got the board all set here. It's hooked up to this... Um, robot arm that we're planning on driving with all the DC motors. It's connected to our National Instruments uh, I.O. device here. And I've got LabVIEW running on the laptop. Um, nothing fancy, just manual controls at this point. But I can, for uh, example, move the shoulder joint here. If it's, it's, it's a stop, flip the switch to control the direction. And I can move it up and down. And basically, you know, it overbalances a little bit. Maybe this guy. And it pretty much all works. Like we expected. Uh, these displays here are the voltages from the position sensor. And as you see, as I go here, that voltage drops some. That I could, if I was doing a feedback control, I can use this signal here to, as an input to measure the actual position, see it going back up. So it's all working pretty good. And I hope you found this interesting. I um, hope we've managed to demystify H bridges just a little bit. Um, show you a couple of different ways to implement this stuff. Talked about some of the practical implications, you know, with noise and filtering and stuff. Oh, one thing I don't think I mentioned on these chips, um, we didn't draw the diodes on our diagram on the board because that those things like the diodes are built into those chips, so we didn't have to um, add those, so we could open the gripper here. No, there's a mechanical fault there. The clutch is slipping. It's not at there it goes. Not the strongest grip in the world. Close it back up. And this, this here is our five volts. But um, I think we covered some practical tips, took the mystery out of this, showed you a couple different ways to implement it using discrete chips as well as the uh, discrete uh, circuit elements, transistors, as well as the integrated circuits. I hope it's worth your time. And, and if you're still with me, thank you very much for watching all this. And, now I'll re reward you or punish you, however you want, with a little infomercial. Um, here at Lawrence Tech University in Southfield, Michigan, we do offer a Bachelor of Science degree in Robotics Engineering. Um, second one in the country to be offered like that. And we're pretty proud of it. And if you think you might enjoy working on robots or robot-like devices, autonomous vehicles or whatever um, for your, as a career, check us out www.ltu.edu and thanks again for watching and hope you enjoyed it. Bye.